So what happened when God pled with his people and asked them to change course? We're going to see what it is here at Zechariah 7, verses 11 and 12. Let's listen. But they refused to heed, shrugged their shoulders, and stopped their ears so that they could not hear. Yes, they made their hearts like flint, refusing to hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent by his Spirit through the former prophets. Thus, great wrath came from the Lord of hosts. So they set themselves so that they couldn't hear. They, they stopped their ears. They plugged them up. They, they, they braced themselves against all that God was trying to tell them. They chose not to hear, but they made themselves so stubborn that they couldn't hear. Basically, they shut the door on God. Guess what happens after that? So he sent them as prophets. His word was clear. He, he, he spared nothing so they could understand his purpose. But of course, their ears were closed. Hey, do you think we're any different? Do you think the challenges for them and for us are, are particularly different from, from the way they are for the others? No. We have a lot of the same kinds of challenges. The status quo is working. We're getting some pay. We're able to feed the family, keep tires on the car. We don't want to ruffle any feathers. We don't want to upset the apple cart. It's just more convenient to coast. Uh, there's so many incoming pieces in life, and so we like to coast. Those same kinds of challenges they face, perhaps in different ways, but in a lot of ways, the same kind of a deal. In Zechariah's day, it was easy for them to forget God. That's why God wants them to remember. So these guys are settled into a pattern. We settle into a pattern too. Now, we're going to find in chapter 8 and onward, we're going to find a lot of encouragement and hope. But this chapter 7, is, is there's a pretty severe response, divine response to these guys. It's because they're stuck. God wants to move, but they're stuck. So the result was great wrath from the Lord of hosts. The Lord, you know, that means the Lord of armies. Here he is, he's the supreme Lord, the supreme ruler of the universe. He's the supreme ruler of armies, offering to be on our side. And what? We won't, aren't willing to take a few risks for him. So that's what we are. We're risk averse today. You know, if you want to build a playground for a, for a church school, you know, you find out. The insurance companies don't want to insure a swing anymore because somebody might fall and, and get hurt. Well, most of us survived swings when we grew up, if we were a little bit older. Everybody wants something that's safe. God's ways are the safest, but they're also the most against the world today, and so we have to be willing to take some risk. We have to be willing to step out and stand out from the crowd, or we are much used to it. So we need to take a step and be bold. We need to be bold in a time of, of, of weakness, and God is ready to help us. Why are we so unready to respond to him? Why are we checking to the left and to the right to see if, if, it's, if it's safe to do something for him? Why are we so anxious to control each other? Why is there so much of that in the church that that urgency to control people. Can't we trust converted people? Can't we trust the Holy Spirit? You know, let's work together as a team. We'll get some things done. We'll make some mistakes. It won't be the end of the world. God will help us. You know, I think one of the action steps we need to take is we need to make sure we're still on what Jeremiah called the old paths. Are we still going in the direction or did our spiritual ancestors or we ourselves kind of veer off at some point? That's a question. We all need to go back. We need to be studious. We need to be in the Word. We need to be opening the Bible and checking and studying, comparing Scripture with Scripture, and make sure that we're doing what God wants. Are we in a church that's following tradition instead of the Bible? Are we following human practices? Should we be keeping the seventh-day Sabbath? Should we be keeping Sunday? Uh, which day is truly the Bible day? Which day did Jesus keep? Should we be baptizing by sprinkling, or should we be baptizing by immersion? Which thing is the right thing? Is there one God manifest in three distinct persons, or are there three separate gods, or one God with three different faces? How do we know? Go to the Bible. And so we need to be people who are checking, studying, learning, and it's not like we've been given, you know, a 10-page book. God has given us a lot of information and a lot of help. So let's be diligent in those things. Let's make sure we're still on the right path. And God will be our helper. And he'll show us how to be bold in a world full of confusion and chaos and mayhem. At least we shouldn't have as much chaos and mayhem, should we? God be with you.